Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Minnesota Twins game review. This one is a good one. The Minnesota Twins get a win five in a row now. Uh, they win in walk-off fashion. Max Kepler hits a grand slam in the first inning. Uh, it, it, you couldn't have asked for a better game, at least in the broad sense. Grand slam, walk-off win. Everything is good. You are now uh, four games up in the AL Central, but the 5-4 score, it doesn't tell you the whole story because this game uh, was definitely not not a great one, but it's a win, and that's what matters. So, like I said, the Twins win 5-4. They win in nine innings, but they get the walk-off. Um, a single by Urshela it hit off Baez's glove, and it was going to be an insane double play if it would have been turned Maybe would not have if Urshela was running fast. I'm not sure. Didn't get to see that part of it. But nonetheless, it was a single that walked the Twins off. Uh, a really good game. We're going to break down the ninth. We're going to break down the first inning Grand Slam here in a second. Uh, but my only concern, the only concern, like I said, the Twins winning is great. They are 26-16 and 16 in the, in the on the season. They are first in the AL Central. Four games up in the White Sox. My only concern is they had to come back from six yesterday which I'll give you a stat on in a second. They had to come back from six yesterday. They walked off the Tigers today. Two bad teams. Is this a sign, right? I mean, they got out hit today. Is this a sign of the Twins winning, which is important, and that's what they did in 2019, but they're not beating up on bad teams. They're just winning against bad teams. And, like, it's baseball you're going to lose sometimes, but is that just a little scary to y'all? Let me know down in the comments below. But regardless, a win is a win. And that's what I'm saying. I'm holding on to that. A win is a win. And it just makes it more exciting when you get to do it in walk-off fashion or comeback fashion like that, right? Um, just a little stat here that I liked on Twitter um, from Bali Sports North. It must have been on the pregame show. The Twins are 6'6", six, 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 and 759. That is .008 when trailing by six runs or more in the eighth inning or later. That is an insane stat. Only six times, five times before yesterday, um, was that ever a, 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 a chance that the Twins have won. That's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Moving on. Um, the last thing I want to say is this is the third best ever start for the Twins. And that's what I'm saying is like in 2019, which is one of the only better seasons of the three that they've had, where they uh where they started out better 26 and 16 is good but they lost in the playoffs they never lost more than three straight in that season uh but yeah is it is it just a little scary okay i just want to know your opinion on that let's get into the game part of it though um we'll start with the hitting because this is what everyone is excited about max kepler hitting a grand slam in the first inning let's go break it down in the first inning uh, Robbie Grossman flew out on the first pitch, which was cool. Archer was doing this weird pitching thing. I didn't like how long he was taking, but whatever. I guess it threw him off. Scope flew out. Um, Baez and Cabrera both got on base, but uh, he got out of it, and that set up the bottom of the first inning. Luis arrives, walks on four pitches. He had a great night at the plate. We'll talk about that after this, but he had a great night at the plate. Correa singles, Polanco singles, and that brings up Max Kepler on a 2-0 count. Boom, got a change up and teed off on it. I knew it was gone, just to let you know. Uh, I wasn't going to call it because I, I was actually said, don't swing. Don't swing until he gives you a strike. He was throwing a lot of balls out there, Rodriguez, whoever that guy is. But he gave Max Kepler a change up down the heart of the plate, and he teed off on it. Uh, made it 4-0 after the first inning. Um, and in fact, the Twins got three of their first four hits for the first, like, what, eight innings? I think it was. It was insane. So three of the first four hits came in the first inning. In the second inning, um, I thought they had a hit. Maybe I was wrong. Let's keep walking. Third, uh, Luis Arias got a walk. Couple more outs. Go to the fifth inning. Luis Arias got a single. There's your four. Um, what else happened? Fly out, ground out, ground out, ground out, ground out, ground out. Uh, we're in the eighth inning now. Luis Arise gets another single. So three of the five or two of the five hits have been off Luis Arise. And then that comes to the ninth inning. In the ninth inning, we are tied after 
the Tigers just kept chipping away, right? They got one in the second, one in the fifth, one in the sixth, one in the seventh, tied it up at four. And then Max Kepler uh, walks. He walks on a full count. It was a good little battle there. Started things off right. Walked. Garlic singles. And that brings up Gary Sanchez. Or Max Kepler went to third on that, by the way. So Gary Sanchez comes up sky high. If there were two outs, I think he would have gone... If no, just kidding. I can't. You can't do that on a sack fly. My bad. Uh, it was one of those plays where you probably could have gone, and it would have been a tough throw, like Tati stealing or tagging up from a, a ball hit to the second baseman. I don't know if you want to risk that with Kepler, but would have been an interesting play. Doesn't matter because the next guy up, Gio Urshela, again, like I said, hit a ground ball up the middle. Baez would have made a sick play to get that one uh, flipped over for the double, but it does not matter, and it's a walk off. I would love to know, just because, um, like I said, the Kepler Grand Slam was the 1,000th home run in target field history. I would love to know how many walk-offs there have been in target field history. If somebody wants to confirm that, I could do it myself and, and figure it out. But if somebody wants to leave that in the comments, too, I'd love to know. Otherwise, I'll probably answer it by tomorrow. Other than that, let's talk about the box score before we go on to pitching. Grossman tonight, or I'm looking at the wrong side. Grossman went 0 for 5. And on the same side of it, Buxton leading things off also went 0 for 4. He's batting 219, by the way. He might need a break. I don't know if he is still injured or not, but he has not been doing good, and that concerns me. Luis Arise, on the other hand, he has been lighting it up. He was 2 for 2 tonight with two walks and a run. He is now batting 349. I don't know. I didn't look it up yesterday. I don't know if what the MLB leader is. I think he's qualified now, but he has got to be up there. 350. His on-base percentage is over 450 and against opponents in the division, like the Tigers, Royals, whatever. He's batting or has an on-base percentage of almost 500. It might be 500 now. It was like 471 or something going into this game. So it is so good. I love it. I love that. Uh, he is probably my favorite player on the Twins. Well, that's not true. Luis or, or uh, Royce Lewis is, but he's got to be like top three. Uh, I love Arise. Love his hitting style. He's doing good. Um, and he, I mean, he didn't win the game tonight, but he did great. Getting on base four times, setting it up every time. The Twins just didn't execute behind him. Behind him, because they did eventually. Correa one for four, Polanco one for four, Kepler one for three with the grand slam. Also drew a walk, a really good night for him. He's batting over 260, by the way, which is really good for him. He's usually around that 230, 240 range, so really good for him. I'd love to see him stay there. Uh, Gordon 0 for three, Garlic one for one. Uh, Larnack another 0 for three night, which is crazy that he's still batting 280. He was lights out before he got injured there for a second. Uh, Urshela 1 for 3 with the game winning RBI. Jeffers 0 for 3. Not a great night at the plate overall. Like I said, they went like the second inning until the eighth inning with like two hits. But pitching wise, Archer did fine. He went four innings, gave up, uh, you know, one run, two walks, four strikeouts. Like he did fine. But like we cannot have a starting pitcher go only four innings all the time. Jax did all right. I mean, like, we've seen better from him. Three hits, two runs. One was a home run to scope. Um, you know, like, we've seen him do better. But, like, he's our, our good reliever. And if we continue to have to put him out there or, like, Winder, for example, when he was healthy and on the team, we have to continue to put those guys out there. One, we're stressing them out. But, two, they're not going to be as effective. And then, three, you have to put out guys like Joe Smith, who only got one out tonight, three hits, and he gave up his first earned run of the season. That was a little bit sad. It was like 18 innings or something that he finally gave up his uh, first run. But Thielbar came, shut it down, and Emilio Pagan pitched the last two innings. It was good to see him do that. Struck out four guys, only gave up one hit, and won us the game. But like I was saying is when you put stress on the bullpen by having to have four guys pitch, yeah, they might have only pitched 20 pitches or so. Like, you can't do that every day. And I know even at the beginning of the broadcast, they were saying, Archer, he's going to go longer now, especially with the teams having to cut down on pitchers. So, or cut down on players, and they might not be able to have 14 pitchers or 13 pitchers or whatever it is. So, I just, like, uh, the Twins won. That's what's great. They they did good. The bullpen has always done pretty well this season. They've had a couple of guys, you know, blow it here, blow it there, like like Joe Smith tonight, Cano last night, Duffy a couple times this year. But for the rest of the, the guys, they're still pretty good, right? They're still solid. 
It's just, we can't have that every night or over the course of the season when we do play better teams and they knock out our starting pitcher a little earlier than we'd like to have them. You can't be running out these guys who have thrown 20 pitches every other day. It just doesn't work. Um, so I don't know exactly how they're going to go about that. The Twins trying to manage their starting pitching staff a little bit better. But like Archer did great. And he wasn't even at that many pitches, was he? Let me see if I can find it quick. Uh, 72 pitches? Like, I know he had a shortened spring. I know he got called up early or, like, later when – or signed later, I mean. It's just, like, four innings, 72 pitches. Like, you would love to see him go one or two more if he could get out of it pretty quick. And we just didn't do that. So, a little concerning. But what can you do? I mean, it's, it's still early. I, I would hope that they're going to figure it out later. Um, and our hitting is what really has won us games. Our bullpen has kept us in games. The the hits have obviously won the game, um, and that's what that's what matters. When you can put up five runs a game, you're going to win most games, and that's what the Twins have been doing since their 4-8 and eight start. They have put up an average of 4.9 runs per game. So lots of stats thrown at you. Hopefully it was a good game for you to watch. I enjoyed it, but I was a little concerned there. Um, but, yeah, like I said, just makes it more exciting when they walk it off. So, that's cool. Twins win. We'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully they can make it six in a row. Peace.